Yep. Hey, it's three o'clock on a Tuesday. We all know what that means. Another riveting episode of Behind Breaking Bond. What you got? Hey, this is Andy Kahn with Crime Talk. This was given to me by Giant Red Sweeted Fish. Wow. Um, that, thank you for you know sending me this giant that was red nice. Swedish fish. Do you so, like that kind of candy? I that's kind of my shtick, you know. Yeah. When I go to lab, I throw when I was at Crime Con and people would answer the correct questions, I threw a pack of Swedish fish. <laughs> <laughs> there you yes. go. So if you want to make me happy? This you you sweet. Yeah. Joining us today is this young man. Introduce yourself, Pastor. I am Pastor Willie Davis, uh, Pastor of the McGregor Farm Community Baptist Church, and also recently had the honor um, with uh, being very humble on um, being elected as the new uh, city councilman at large position number two. This will be your first time to be on city council. Very, very first time, third run. Yeah, my third run, but my first time. What um, what made you decide to run? Well, actually, what made me decide to run uh, all three times, each was primarily, well, two were different. First time I ran, I ran because I thought that it was during the hero ordinance that Elise Parker had thrown at the city mm -hmm. and kind of disregarded, you know, the, the voters, that type of thing. And, uh, and it was really about that more than, than about the lifestyle of people. Right. Um, you know, but uh, I ran in 2015 and got in a runoff against the incumbent who was sitting in this very seat, you know, yeah. David Robinson, who was an Anise Parker supported candidate. And so um, I got in the runoff. There were five of us in the race, and I'm not the politician. I'm the I'm a pastor servant. Yeah. So I, I got the runoff. The course fell short. In 2019, I ran again. At this time, I ran with the emphasis on crime. Yeah. So now we've got a new thing going on in our city, and I'm a native Houstonian, born and raised in this city, pastored all my life. Uh, 20, 20 years of my first church that I pastored here. Went to school here, graduated from school here. Where did you go to school? I went to uh, San Francisco. I went to Stephen F. Austin High School, kind of third ward, East End. Yeah. From there, I went to San Francisco State University, Huntsville. And from there, I volunteered for the United States Army. And I served in the Army, uh, Green Beret Special Forces, during that latter years of Vietnam, uh, there in Okinawa, Japan. There's really kind of a lot of similarities in being a pastor and a politician because you have to kind of be yes. open, receptive to yeah. people. You yeah. have to be able to talk to people, Absolutely. care in front of people. Absolutely. You're so right, man. And, and the reality is who better know people than pastors? Right. So that's what we are. And you obviously know your community. Oh, I know my community. I know it. I grew up in it. I know it. I've traveled all over the city. And then I had the opportunity, guys, that I was the um, what was called the minister advisory board to the mayor. We were we were not under the mayor, but we was an advisory of ecumenical pastors, Baptist, Lutheran, AME, UN. Under Mayor Turner? No, I actually went all the way back to Mayor Whitmark. Really? It wow, did. like you go a it, long it, way back. All the way back. It started, that organization started under Whitmark. And it rolled over onto Bob Lanier, rolled over to Lee Brown, yeah. rolled over to Bill Wright. But when it got to Lee Parker, she didn't want it. What was it that you all would do? We would primarily meet once a month. City Hall would give us a conference room. And pastor would come up. We had an organization where we had what they called judicatory heads, mm -hmm. right? So each one of these denominations have so many churches under them, right? So we would meet. And, and collectively, and we would discuss the issues pertaining to the city, like the sports authority, the police department, yeah. public works. And what we would do, if we got complaints from the community of something that the community didn't feel like they was being treated fairly, right? And most of them were black pastors, and but we 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 had the we had the ear and the, and the, and, the, and the attention of the mayor. And they would let us meet. And if it was something that needed to be addressed, we tell the mayor, he said, okay, I'll come into the next meeting. That's great. Or I'll send the chief down, or I'll send the director of public works, or whatever. 
you know, we were, we were talking earlier, this is really the first time in a long time that the city of Houston, well, we've got a new mayor and a bunch of new city council members. At least six new city council members. You've got a new mayor. I think you got a new mindset. And I think that's what kind of the elected people in the city of Houston kind of made their voice yeah. pretty well known now when you had Mayor Whitmer with a resounding victory. And then you have a more of a conservative base city council elect than we had before. Right. I tell you, you would agree with that, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I do. I do agree with that. And it's probably, I don't know what would I'd say the first time in what, maybe a couple of decades that we've had such a big change, a big change, a big turnover, and basically the issue of crime was the resounding issue. I think yeah. the people of the city kind of made their calling card as to who they wanted in office. And that was a, a big a big one for you, right? You kind of ran on that. I ran on that. I, I ran on it in 2019, and uh, um, I ran on it again this time. But mostly I ran on the idea that not only is Houston broke, but Houston is broken. And uh, we need to start focusing on how we fix our city with, with some of the uh, corruption and some of the things that are internally that's gone on over the past uh, administration and it's time now the people have spoken and that's 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 where I'm coming from crime in what we win the number one subject that everybody was concerned with no matter what community you were in no matter what the ethnicity was crime was number one and I tried you know Andy and and uh, you, uh, Rand, and others, Greg Grogan came out because I called him up and he said, Pastor, you was one of the first persons that talked about it in 2019. How did you know? I said, well, number one, I'm from the community. Yeah. Number two, uh, I lived in one of the most crime-riddled cities in America, Chicago. And when I got there, I saw what crime was doing to a major urban city. And when I came back to Houston, I'm like, Oh no, this is not the way. Houston is the way when I left. I left in 06. Yeah. Came back in 2010. And it's a change. Change. Yeah. change. And yeah. I said, oh no, I, I've got to speak up against this. And that's when I ran. And and it's kind of gotten progressively worse, wouldn't you agree? Oh, uh, I mean, if you just look at the data, the perception, the amount of people that have been revolving through the courthouse, and right. we've been doing these breaking bond segments. For three years, Crime Stoppers, in conjunction with HPD and the District Attorney's Office, you know, we we started noticing this in early 2019. Yeah, it was well before everybody, you know, yeah. was blaming COVID for yeah. COVID. Yeah. Everything, yeah. you know, COVID became a convenience cue, but we knew this was happening before COVID. And I, ne I never will forget. Yeah, it was like late 2018, 2019, in that time frame. You would come to me and you would tell me about, hey, there's this defendant who's out on yeah. six different felony bonds. And yeah. I'd be like, yeah. that can't be yeah. the right. I mean, it was just it because it was unheard of. Unheard of. You know, I mean, there was a time when, and again, like we keep impressing that everyone gets a bond. Everyone should get a bond. But nowhere in the Texas Constitution right. does it say, that a defendant has to have multiple bonds or multiple right. chances to right. be free pending trial. That's right. That's right. And, and, and believe it or not, uh, as I often say to people, if you go to Chicago and, and you ask the average uh, person that lives in Chicago, no matter what part of the city they live in, and you ask them what is the problem to, the, you know, with the crime and the gangs and all of that, and they'll tell you that uh, these, these guys are walking out yeah. you know, almost with no bonds, no, just letting them out of jail two and three and four times. Most it's sort people. of like a mindset, isn't it? Or what would you call it? Um, a political theory, an idea. How would you term it? Because it, it's happening. It's happened in different it parts of the be, country. There used to be a stigma if you committed a crime and you went to prison. Mm -hmm. There's no longer a stigma. It, it's almost in some cases a badge of honor if you do that. Yep. So we don't yep. we don't make it where you're accountable for your actions. But you know, Pastor, you brought up a point, you know, earlier, and the question is, okay, we as 
mayor like Whitmire would, would say, you know, we re we've got a problem and we've got to admit we've got a problem. Yeah. Right? And so now we admit that we do have a problem. Yeah, what problem. are we going to do about it? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we've been noticing, and I'm sure you've been seeing, is young people. Yes. The young people who yes. are, A, committing crimes, I feel like I've never seen in my life, and even today you had a shooting yeah. yes. by, uh, by the high school again, and the victim was between 16 and 19. Right. So young people who are not only just perpetrators, but young people who are also being Victor victimized Bills. as right. well in an unprecedented, you know, a fury that I've not seen before. So I guess as a council member, how would you use your position now as a city council member? start talking and addressing these issues? Well, good question, Andy. Uh, while I was on the campaign trail, I got asked that question quite often uh, to the to the candidates that were running. I said, okay, we all know crime is our number one concern. So tell us <clears throat> what would you do as a council member to address that? Well, first of all, I know I'm one of, in, of 16. And one of the things I want to do is to number one, convince those other council members that we've got to come up with something. I'm not saying I'm the guru right. on, on how to fix it, but since it was primarily my stumping thing, here's one of the things I want to offer to them and tell them, let's work together on this. And I think we can help the mayor and HPD and our community reduce this crime. Number you one. you're kind of you're you're going to have more of a conservative yes kind of a, a feel this time than in than in the past correct and I think we could we could convince the other councils who may not be as conservative as we are right on something and what to do and one of the things that I said to the community and I'm going to go in with that first of all I gave them this here's one of the solutions police pastors and people. So if you, if you just really think about the scenario of that right there. So if we as police officers want to get more involved and connected with the pastors, right. there are churches in every community. Right. Okay, where you live, there are churches. So those pastors become a catalyst to the community right. because the community will pay more attention to a pastor. When they see us, they hear us, we show up to functions, whether it's turkey giveaways or, or anything right. pertaining to you, pastors show up, then the people are going to hear what we have to say. And if we say to them, we partnered with the police department to curtail this situation. And so that's why I came up with the three P's, police, pastors, and people. Remember back in the, in the 80s when Lee P. Brown was the police chief. He was really big on this whole community-oriented police. Absolutely. It was very successful, well, and that's kind of what led him to be the mayor. Exactly. And matter of fact, through the whole uh, Mayor Lee P. Brown and I had a tremendous relationship when he was mayor, and he endorsed me. Yeah. So that, that right there tells you, I know Willie, and I know where Willie's going. And, and, and when we do that, and I was saying, referring to Andy, in that regards, because listen, there are other things I'm sure that need to be done. But here's here's one of the reasons why I say that. And once I get sworn in, one of my first objectives, which all of the pastors know, I've already called them. I'm going to call and gather, and it may be a lunch, and it may be a breakfast, and we're going to all get in that room, and we're going to talk about recreating a minister advisory board. Yeah. And people are going to be assigned the areas. We, I want them to listen. We are accountable. You know, someone said to me, well, Pastor, you know, uh, you know, now that you're there, uh, we're going to hold you accountable. I said, no. I said, I'm already accountable. You don't have to hold me accountable. I'm already accountable. Every city council person is already accountable right. to fixing what's wrong in our city. Well, and you're there for the people. The people <laughs> put you there. <laughs> and, you know, it's got to it's gotta be invigorating because, like you said, this is the third time you've run. Yes. What was it like when you found out you won? Oh, oh, let me tell you, I, I, Andy, I was, I was just like, the numbers, the numbers, the sheer numbers of my win really shocked me. I, I, I mean, honest, I didn't think 
I was winning that big. I thought I would win yeah. marginally. I always felt like I would win because I was the opponent who I had has no, you know, uh, community uh, uh, involvement. Right. Uh, he know people, uh, new people, but you probably had more name recognition. I did. Yeah, I did. I had more name recognition, and I have a lot of of. Uh, of uh, experience and things that was behind me, community involvement. Right. I worked with almost every political office holder, Democrats and Republicans, and they all know me. And you know, one of the interesting things about, especially when you look at the runoff, there was like a, well, like Whitmire had a huge lead. Huge but lead. then there were some people that won that, they they just won for a few hundred votes. I mean, that's yeah, a few I'm hundred votes. Really one yeah. Yes. Four hundred and fifty some odd. Exactly. Votes. Right. Exactly. And yet you basically, there was no. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty much a done deal. Yeah. Right? The numbers came in. Exactly. Right. How are you notified that you want that you won? I was I was at the watch party and I I was <laughs> I was watching the television. We had, we had they were showing and results. they were showing the results. Yeah. And my family, you know, was all there. And my friend was there. And they kept watching. As a matter of fact, they were watching it more than I was. And and all of a sudden they kept, man, you know, Pastor, you five thousand up, you ten thousand up, you know, you twelve thousand up. I'm like, oh my goodness. And I was like, really? I mean, it was it was just, you know, and I think one of the things about it that really let me know for me, it was a faith God thing. I keep telling people all the time. It was not a win for Willie Davis. It was a win for the people. The people in the city of Houston that I love and I was born and raised in this town and grew up in this town, everybody wants something different. Yeah. They're looking for something different. They're looking for the hope that somebody could get in there and serve the people and, and, and get some things done. I think it's so important, too, that you are you are from here. Yes. You grew up here. It's That's like right. this has been your life pretty much. Exactly. This is right and ready. You're right. And I mean, I tell and have discussions with people and I tell them things and they go, Willie, you remember that? How old are you, dude? <laughs> you know, I, I tell people, I know you so well. I was born literally on Scott Street. Really? My mother didn't even make it to the hospital. Wow. Man. I was born with a midwife on Scott Street to go freeway. Jeez. And I remember Scott Street when it was a gravel road. Yeah. And, a and two look at it now. And look at it now. Yeah. And so I tell them that Buff Stadium, when when my brothers and I would go over to the baseball stadium, the Coast 45, yeah. and try to get balls coming over the fence. And, you know, so. There's, There's so a much. lot of history and a lot of yeah. institutional knowledge yes. that, yes. that you bring. And I believe things happen for reasons. And I think it was like You're right a there. perfect storm in this election. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason that you are now elected and you had the opportunity of a lifetime and a fully. Absolutely. You talk about your pulpit, now you got an entire city. That's so right. That's exactly. your pulpit right now. What do you, like as far as, what do you do first? Like come up with your staff or how, how do you even kind of start yeah what the way you do is can you hire us <laughs> <laughs> I, probably I probably should i should you know what here's here's the thing as much as i knew city council people and people that were mayors and all that right this the, the the process about going into that downtown city hall was just shocking to me because we won, the election ended on Saturday night. Right. So I'm up first thing Sunday morning to be at my church at 10 o'clock in the morning, service, 10 service, 10 a.m. service. And then I got home and I'm thinking, wow, man, I could take a breathe, you know, kind of relax and whatever. Then I pop up on my email and it says, uh, council member elect Willie Davis, uh, congratulations. Uh, we want you, you're required to be at the city hall at 7.30 Monday morning. Yeah. Oh, and it's all day. Yeah. All day? Then Tuesday morning, all day. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we down there taking photos and whatever. Then at the same time, your your email is blowing up because people want to say, okay, I'm interested. I want to put a resume in. Yeah. <clears throat> be your chief of staff. I mean, there's a lot you've got it's to do just to get started. Just to get started. You, you have to pick your office or uh, 
time. Well, you, you the, now that's a good question, Andy, because going in, one of the first issues I had that the at large two officers, which is what David Robinson, the tenured yeah. council going out, someone had notified the group that I was talking with their staff and said, hey, they're talking about taking your office and some other council was like, why? And they were like, we don't even know why. Why they can't just stay where they are. They want the seat where they are. Why they want your room? I said, that's crazy. Yeah. I'm like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to get start bringing accusations against people like, oh, okay, we we're gonna target Willie. No. I said, well, okay, let me just talk to some people. And I did. And one of the council members literally tried to want to move my office, but they said, no, nah, no, nah, we're gonna let Willie stay at two offices and stay in it. It's, it's obvious it's gonna be an exciting time, don't you think, for the city? Because it's like all this new blood yeah. making <laughs> decisions for the entire city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be interesting. It is. It's gonna be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. It's a great to it. opportunity and you know, it, it gives hope for everybody. Absolutely. I mean, you know, like I said, you know. You know, it was your third time running, and I tell people some of the bills that we filed, you know, for example, it took us 12 years, seven legislative sessions where you can't get probation for murder. Yeah. But if we don't keep doing it, it's right. right. coming up there that's right. and keep pushing it, it that's doesn't right. happen. So. Well, and, and, and that's that's a perfect right. example of something that you would, that just makes common sense, but yeah. It was quite a fire to make it happen. We started in 1999. Wow. And in 2011. Sure thought. Wow. So, but again, if we don't persevere we don't, that's and exactly. and and just say, you know what, we're just going to keep bringing it up. And, you know, that's right. You know, that's right. Pastor Willie Davis, thank you so much for joining us. Please come back sometime. Absolutely. This, will. this is our last Behind Breaking Bond for 2023. Wow, it's been quite a year, hasn't it? Uh, so the question is, are we going to be renewed for 2024? <laughs> I think we're on the bubble. Channel so says we're on the know. bubble. So it's up to you. I mean, if right. you like what we're doing, sure. you know, and if not, you know, we'll go run for city council. <laughs> there you we'll go work for right we'll now. Work. Hey, as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Be sure to tune in to Fox 26 News tonight at 9 4. Uh, a behind or, or a breaking bond segment. This is one of those that, on the surface, it just doesn't make sense. Well, you know, we've had a lot of domestic violence. Yes, just horrible situations in the last week yeah. in the city of Houston. Yeah. So one of the uh, cases that we're looking at tonight is a guy that's been out. I, I lost track on how many bonds, and it's the same victim over and over. At least and over ten, right? At least ten. Now about. he's finally in custody wow. again for, for how long and it goes to the old adage how how what do you got to wait for i mean yeah. it's fairly obvious that's right this you know are you waiting for something more tragic to happen or you are you going to say enough is enough so we'll find out so be sure to tune in to that clock thank 26 you guys, at night. thank you for being here hey be kind to yourself and everyone else see you next year bye